Welcome to this module about the extended Kalman filter, the EKF. The extended Kalman filter is, as the name suggests, an extension of the normal Kalman filter that allows the filter to be applied to nonlinear models. This uh, extends the usability considerably. The extended Kalman filter also has a prominent position in history, as this was part of the Apollo program that managed to bring man to moon. Before you continue here, you should have some knowledge of the Kalman filter, which you get from our previous module on that. We start by revisiting the results from the Kalman filter module. The Kalman filter is a linear filter that applies to linear models of this kind. So the next state is a linear combination of the current one plus some process noise. And we have measurements that are linear combinations of the state plus some measurement noise. With this, we get a toe stroke engine for state estimation that contains a time update step in which we predict the state for the future and how uncertain it will be about it. In this step we actually lose information as we don't know what's going to happen in the future so we get a larger uncertainty than we started with. In the second step we have the measurement update which incorporates measurements into the state knowledge. That way we also bring down the uncertainty. This was made by these equations. Linear models are the one that we have saw are quite nice to work with. They usually provide analytical solutions to problems and are in general quite easy to work with. They are also motivated by many physical phenomena. At the same time, there are many physical phenomena that are not suited for the linear formulation. Uh, one is the range measurements that we use in lab one or the rotation dynamics that we use in lab two. To capture also those kind of problems, we need to extend our model view to nonlinear models. The models of this kind here. They're similar to the one we just saw, but instead of a linear combination of x, the next state is actually a function, general function of x and the process noise. And the measurement in the same way is not a linear combination of the state, but a, a general function of the state, plus some measurement noise. We still assume that we know the covariance of both process noise and measurement noise, and that the mean of both the process noise and measurement noise are zero. In the extended Kalman filter, we will approximate this model with a linear one using the Taylor series expansion, and then apply the Kalman filter to get new filter equations. Here we will derive the extended Kalman filter using the classical derivation. For simplicity, we will use a slightly simpler nonlinear model than on the previous slide. The process noise is assumed to be additive and uh, not included in the function f. This does not change anything uh, big, and you can find the complete expressions in any textbook on the extended Kalman filter. To derive the time update, we start by linearizing f. And we linearize it around the best information that we have about the state at the moment. That is x hat k given k. That gives us an expression for f that is a constant term. So we put in the uh, linearization point in f, the derivative of f times the, the difference between x and this uh, linearization point. Next, we insert this linearized function into the dynamic model in which case we get this. We have reordered the terms slightly to highlight that these parts are known beforehand. We assume that x hat k given k is known and that we have a normal linear function of x and process noise here. This is then known input to the Kalman filter which we can compensate for. Doing that we get the filter equations here. Note that the only thing that differs compared to the normal Kalman filter is that instead of f times k, uh, x, we have f of x in the update of the mean, and that f is not a known constant matrix, but instead the Jacobian of the function f. Next, we will derive the measurement update. This is done in a way very similar to the time update. We start by linearizing h in this case around the best state knowledge that we have at the moment that is x hat k given k minus 1. We get this form here with a constant 
the Jacobian and the difference between the states and the linearization points. Insert this into the measurement model and do after some rearrangement of terms get this expression here. For the first part again, it's a constant that we can compute as soon as we know x hat k, k minus 1. And the linear part, which is h times x plus measurement modes. This model can now be used in the Kalman filter measurement update equations. And we get this. Um, the term here is quite more involved than in the normal Kalman filter, but observing that this one here and this one are identical and cancels out, we get the more familiar short form here. Furthermore, the covariance update is exactly the same as in the Kalman filter, with the exception that here h is not a constant, but rather the Jacobian of the measurement function h. To avoid numerical issues, we recommend that you use Joseph's form for the covariance update in this case. You have just seen the classical way of deriving the extended Kalman filter uh, by linearizing the model and then applying the normal Kalman filter. Extended common field can also be derived using the TT1 transformation and lemma 7.1 in a way similar to we derived the uncentered common filter in that module. Uh, that uh, motivates the name EKF1 that we sometimes use. If including also quadratic components in the Taylor series expansion of the model, before applying the common filter, we get the extended common filter 2. Uh, that can also be derived using the TT2 transformation and lemma 7.1. Uh, the EKF2 uh, contains compensations with quadratic effects in the model, which results in additional terms in uh, both the mean and covariance expressions. This can be useful if the model has strong quadratic components. However, there are no guarantees uh, regarding optimality for either EKF1 or EKF2. Unfortunately, the optimality conditions for the Kalman filter are not fulfilled. However, experience says that the extended Kalman filter works well in many applications. So we'll summarize, and this slide is a bit messy, but I want to show you the exact expressions for the EKF1 first. You see the time update here, it's exactly the expressions that we uh, stated on the previous slides and the measurement updates. Then we add uh, the second order effects and we get this thing here. So from the EKF2, we get the compensation X right in time update step that blows up the covariance matrix. And in the same way here, we actually it blow up the innovations and the resulting covariance matrix here. So slightly more involved expressions that could help if you have uh, strong quadratic effects and something that's a bit more conservative when it comes to the estimates. So some more comments about these EKFs that we have derived. The EKF1 requires the Jacobian to be computed, whereas the EKF2 requires both the Jacobian and the Hessian. This can be either obtained uh, analytically or uh, with numerical approximations of the derivatives, as is done in the single and systems lab by default. Uh, the complete EKF1 has the same complexity as the Kalman filter. It's uh, big O N3, where N is the dimension of the states. And that is due to the propagation of the covariance matrix in the time update step, which is the dominating term. The same complexity analysis for the EKF2 gives us N5 complexity, which again is again due to the time update step and the propagation of the covariance matrix there. So the extended common filter of order two is actually quite more expensive than the first order extended comma filter. Overall, uh, when dealing with this kind of approximate methods, uh, dithering is good. good. Uh, that is, you should increase both Q and R uh, from the well expected values because then you account for the 
errors has been made in the model approximations. It makes the robust. I will use the same example as in the Kalman filter module to exemplify how to use the extended Kalman filter in MATLAB and uh, Signal and Systems Toolbox. Uh, that means we have a constant velocity model here. Uh, we measure the position. Uh, and this step here is important. We have to convert the linear state space model to nonlinear object so that we can apply the extended Kalman filter and get the result on the right. The result is identical to the one that we obtained with the Kalman filter because uh, the special case of the extended Kalman filter is actually the normal Kalman filter when we have a linear model. And just to visualize it also for the separate components of the states individually, as done with this expression here, and we get the state estimates which are pretty good for the position, whereas more uncertain about the uh, velocity. And again, this is because we are measuring the position and the information about the velocity is only indirect through the connection between consecutive positions and the velocity. And this the filter, of course, can visualize. To summarize, in this module, we have looked at extended Kalman filter, which is a way to extend the normal Kalman filter to handle nonlinear models. Models that are quite common in practice. I did this in the classical way in which the model is first linearized and then the Kalman filter applied to it. I did it this way because I think it's a good way of showing that kind of operations that's involved in that derivation. The extended Kalman filter can also be derived in a more general framework which would fit the uncentered Kalman filter, the extended Kalman filter and the normal Kalman filter. If doing it so, you can easily see the difference between the EKF1 and EKF2. Please have a look at the UKF module to see how this is done. It's important to notice that the EKF does not have the optimality properties as the normal Kalman filter has. However, it does in practice often perform very well. So it's a good choice if you need to have a quick fix or a try simple things first method for a nonlinear filtering problem. Read more about this in chapter 8 of the textbook, uh, and you should there read the part related to the extended Kalman filter.